The Ogvape VX200 mod. The Ogvape VX200 was sent to me for a review from Ogvape. I got this as part of a kit that Ogvape is selling, which includes three disposable tanks. I'll be doing a separate review for those tanks, but you can get that full kit for about $50. I've seen it even cheaper lately. And you can get the devices separately for about $40, and the disposable tanks for about $12 for a pack of three. But this is a super sleek 200 watt device, and unlike Ogvape's other recent releases, the Ogvape VX200 has a lot of advanced features. You might also notice that the name of the VX200 is similar to the V200 that Ogvape released a few months ago. The V200 was inspired by the Honda car engine, but this one is totally different. I'm not really sure why they kept the name so similar. Anyway, let's take a look at it. So it's 65 grams in weight, it's 87.5 millimeters by 45 millimeters by 29.2 millimeters. Puts out five to 200 watts. The voltage is 0.2 to 7.2 volts. It handles resistance between 0.5 to 3 ohms. They say the working efficiency is 94%, and the colors it comes in is black, red, and gunmetal. In the box, you'll get the VX200 box mod, a USB cable, and a user manual. So my first thought when I saw the screen and the rounded edges of the front panel on the VX200 is how it's just like the edge-to-edge -edge screens on newer smartphones. I have the Samsung Galaxy S9, and it immediately made me think of my own phone. And sure enough, when I went to Ogvape's website, I see that the body is inspired by the edge-to-edge -edge panels on phones so they nailed it and I think it looks great just the front though from the side it looks nothing like a phone but cool aesthetic nonetheless the one downside to the panels is that they are fingerprint magnets you'll get smudges all over this so the size of the VX200 is about 3.4 inches tall 1.8 inches side to side and about one inch thick it's also only 65 grams and just to provide some reference it's a little heavier than a golf ball or a tennis ball and not even as heavy as a deck of cards it's pretty light and that's because it's all plastic the screen on the front is a 1.3 inch color display and like I mentioned earlier the original V200 looked exactly like the valve cover of a car engine the only car related thing going on with the vx 200 is the dial on the screen which ogvape says is similar to a speedometer on a car dashboard which i guess i can see but i think it's reaching it doesn't really remind me of a speedometer not that i really care though i think it looks good either way so on the screen you'll see vape time the mode you're in your wattage voltage resistance and the battery life the screen also has a 240 by 240 RGB resolution. The biggest drawback with the screen is that it's just not bright enough. When you're outside and the sun is shining down, you can't see a thing. It's just like the Druga Foxy. The plastic cover is so darkly tinted that it makes the screen really hard to see, when in reality, it's probably really vivid and bright underneath. All right, let's talk functions and features. The firing button runs along most of the entire side of the VX200, which makes the button easy to find and activate in both hands, but the button is really only active on the top half. If you press the bottom half, it won't connect the, to the switch. All right, let's talk modes. The last couple of devices from Ogvape have been as basic as basic can be. 200 watts and that's it. I actually really like that, but that's because I only use wattage when I vape. I test out all of the features when I do my reviews, but when the reviews are done, I just go straight back to wattage mode, a max of 90 watts usually. Anyway, there are four modes in the VX200. Variable wattage, and there are options to pick from normal, soft, and high. That's the preheat setting that your vape starts at, and then it settles in on whatever wattage you set it at. And you can adjust the wattage from 5 watts to 200 watts in 1 watt increments. It stops automatically when you reach 200 watts, and then another click brings it back to 5 watts, so at round robins. And then you have variable voltage. In this mode, you can set it between 0.5 and 7.2 volts. And then you have bypass mode, and this runs your device off of the batteries, kind of like a mech mod, but with safety settings. What's interesting about this is that the VX200 runs like a series mech mod rather than a parallel. That means you'll get 7.2 volts from fully charged batteries. And then temp control. This has presets for stainless steel, titanium, and nickel, NI200. And you also have the options to adjust TCR base, TCR advanced, and ohms lock. With all the features built into this device, I'm surprised that there's no option to set TCR curves or adjust the wattage in temp control, with a, which are both very common features in temp control devices. But maybe that will come out in a future firmware upgrade. Outside of the mode settings, you also have an additional settings and information menu. So there are a lot of settings available here. You have auto mode, and that tries to set your device to what it believes is the best wattage based on the build of your atomizer. It works okay, but is more of a starting point for less experienced users. I keep it off. You have cutoff time, and that lets you choose how many seconds you want to allow the device to hit before it turns off. Standby sets how long the device will stay on after you press a button. You can set it to 5, 10, 20, 30, or 60 seconds. Or if you don't care about battery life, you can set it to stay on all the time. I wouldn't recommend that. Then there's the LCD color setting, and there are four presets, orange-red, 
olive green, sky blue, or white and black. And there's also a user defined setting. In user defined, you can set the percentages of red, green, and blue. And you can play around with that and see how it changes live while you're making settings. Temperature unit lets you change whether you want the device to work in either Fahrenheit or Celsius. Language lets you change between Chinese or English, and factory default lets you reset everything on the device to the way it was out of the box. So going back to the main menu, there's an information setting, and you'll see in here that you have personal statistics. It also includes your firmware version, and you'll find the option to do a firmware upgrade. The personal statistics are pretty interesting. You can see how many puffs you've ever taken from the device, the average duration of your puffs, the average wattage setting that you use, the average temperature if you use temp control, and the total joules that you've used. I don't know why anyone would even care about that, but it's there and the total time that you've used your device. All right, let's talk about batteries. So this is a dual 18650 battery device. The batteries are not included. You pull the back panel off to get access to the battery sled. The magnets are strong and the battery cover sits really tight. You'll see plus and negative signs to tell the direction to place the batteries, and you'll also see labels telling you which battery is in each slot. Ogvape says that the chip inside of the VX200 is designed to use the least amount of wire as possible, and they say that this prevents the battery current from having to travel through unnecessary lengths of wire, which in turn allows the batteries to last longer. Now I have to be honest here, I think that's marketing bull, but the battery life seems normal to me. And finally, the USB port. You can use that to charge the batteries while still in the VX200 and also to upgrade the firmware. All right, so my final thoughts. Ogvape's most recent devices, like the V200 and the Druga Foxy, were simple wattage-only devices. They were easy to use, and I really like that about them. The VX200 is totally different and has a bunch of features. The features are actually a lot like the Vaporesso Revenger. I mean, just like it, plus or minus a couple of small details, which makes me wonder if they're using the Omni chip or something similar in here. But yeah, it's a nice device. It's really light, it pushes a lot of wattage, it fires really fast, and it looks great. The biggest drawback for me is that the screen is hard to see outside, but it really is a great device that I like a lot. The Ogvape VX200 was sent to me for review from Ogvape. I've seen it online for around $40, but I'll include more details in the description. Okay, that's it. Thanks for checking out this review, and I'll catch you on the next one.